life here can be as crazy as you want it to be. Uh, sometimes it's very challenging to not get consumed with all the things that you have to do on the on a farm. Uh, you have to pace yourself and have a priority list. I think it's uh, it's great to be out in the open, to uh, be out in God's creation, and to be in the peace of it. I have cattle, so I get to see new life being born in the winter. And it's uh, it's very humbling to uh, be there when a new calf is born and, and to see it do, to survive and to do well and, and its mom take care of it in nature. What makes my life complete is just my family and, and God and, and trying to stay humble and grounded and, and do what, whatever it is that he's called me to do, which I'm still working out every day. I was born in uh, Plainville, Kansas, which is not too far from here. I grew up in Natoma. Um, that's where I was, where I would say I was raised. Um, I grew up in the church. Um, we went to church every Sunday. I feel like we had a pretty good relationship with Christ. There was a kind. There's definitely a time after high school where uh, I fell into a working, working during the week and partying on the weekend, and I really fell away from God and didn't have a relationship with Him. In my mind, I was a good person. At the core, I was a good person. Even though I didn't do anything for anybody else and I was really pretty selfish in almost everything I did, um, you know, I was a good provider for my family. I went to work every day and I was responsible in that regard, but I, I had my own time and I, I really struggled with alcohol in a very real way. Um, she prayed for me, you know, devoutly for several years. Uh, she got very connected. It was easy to see the change in her, that she was becoming a different person. Um, and, you know, I was, I was working on my relationship with God as well, but I kept that, uh, I kept that alcohol addiction as, I lied to myself, it's not that big a problem. It wasn't until I quit that I realized how big of a lie it was and how much of a problem I had and how much my life had been centered around that. Um, I realized, you know, the friends that I once had were, they, they were still friends, they were still acquaintance, but we really didn't have anything in common. There was a time there where um, I had to kind of relearn what life was about and what I was doing. And, and in that time, my relationship with Christ uh, got a lot better. Um, once I got over the shock of uh, no longer fighting an addiction, because there's kind of a transition period there where you gotta you gotta figure things out again. You de become dependent on it, and it becomes such a crutch in your life that when you remove that crutch, you feel like you're gonna fall over for a while. <clears throat> but after uh, after I'd quit drinking for six months or so, uh, I realized that it was a uh, it was a burden on my life. It made things tougher. Um, my walk with Christ and uh, becoming a father. To my children became a lot easier after I quit. And a pastor actually challenged me to lead a Bible study where the, you know, I really felt the call and I really felt that there was a purpose and that I was gifted in, in some area where I could contribute back to the church and to God. And, and you know, salvation is not earned, but uh, it's not until you take a vested interest in, in serving the Lord that you you know, that I felt a connection. From there, I, it was a, I took a challenge to, to learn more about God, because I was leading other people, so I felt if I was gonna, if I was gonna lead other people, I needed to know. So during that time of serving others, I actually grew more. Uh, it feels great to be believed in. Uh, yeah, there's so many times where you can, you can get down on the, the world can get down on you and you can get down on yourself and to, to have that strength in your corner to know that they're there to help pick you up. It, it helps to, uh, to stay up longer and to, uh, anytime, I mean, we get, we get worn out when we see, when we try to help people and we see the, you know, we just see all the hurt in the world and, and so to have that person in your corner that you know is, will be there and, and uh, help you help pray for you and and pray for whatever you're going through and uh, to just share your heart for Christ and to, to help you in your walk 
you know, it's 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 great to be to have a wife that uh, has got my back, is in my corner, and you know, we can do ministry together. We can whatever we're going through, we help support each other up. You know, if she's having a bad day, I can I can usually sense it and ask her what's going on and be there for her, and she's there for me, and uh, um, it's it's wonderful. There's redemption at the end of life that has been bought and paid through Jesus Christ. Um, you know, I don't know the the redemption. You know, there's redemption from sin, the sins that we we have committed and uh, the way that we choose. Sometimes, sometimes the sin owns us, um, or we become so ingrained in it that it it changes our life for the worse. Um, there's definitely a redemption, and if we seek Christ. And if we're willing to let him come into our life, he will change us. So there's redemption from the sin that we've allowed to rule our life.